We're going to go with uh, Elaine. Um, her pronouns are she, her. And uh, she has the concept of creationism. Saw a, saw a story where someone changed his mind when he thought about a game creator creating a game. Hello, Elaine. You're on with John and Drew. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, John. Hi, Drew. Hey. So what have you got for us? The concept of creationism. Yeah, so I was watching this YouTube video and it was by a game creator. And he had like the opposite backstory of Drew. He grew up atheist, but he changed his mind when he realized like his argument was that we're such powerful creators ourselves. Uh, we can create new worlds in the form of video games, for instance, and video game characters don't know we exist. So why doesn't it make sense for there to be a creator more powerful than us? And I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Oh. Wow. Oh, that's deep. What a thought. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a, a, so someone think, just break it down for me one more time so it sinks into my very thick skull. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, this guy, he grew up atheist and he changed his mind because he was a game creator and he thought, oh, we are such powerful creators. So why couldn't there be a more powerful creator who created us? Okay. And we just don't know that he exists because video game creators don't know that their creators exist. But but yeah, could, could video game creators let their characters know that they exist? Ah, uh, it's a key word. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. a good question. Elaine, Elaine, the way you worded it, and, and I think it's the same word that John just keyed off of, is could, right? Could there be, if we have... And if I'm misphrasing this, then tell us, Elaine, but if we can create these worlds, then could there be a creator of this one? Well, sure. I mean, I, I, that's my response. Sure, I guess there could be. I, but that's a different question than do we have good reason to, to, to find or conclude that there is? And so I think that's yeah. where at least my conclusion would be very different. But but sure, there could. It's a fun thought experiment, I guess. I'm not. I'm not sure we go very far with it, but uh, but it's kind of fun and fantastical, and like Hi. some of these other things, I guess. I don't know. Those are my introductory thoughts. What do you well, think, Elaine? I have a follow up question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've got a follow up question. So um, I just find it very interesting, Drew's background of becoming a preacher, and I wanted to hear more about or being a preacher and then becoming atheist, and I wanted to hear more about that. Okay. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so let me say this, Elaine, just because there is much, much, much that could be said. Is there, I guess, maybe a, a more specific question within it or area of curiosity within it or? Yeah, um, just like what you know. opened your eyes? Like what, what, where, where did, did the switch come slowly over time or was it like a big switch? The, you know, the D um you know deep, deep conversion deconstruction yeah mm -hmm. the d word the glorious uh yeah d words <laughs> well deacon by d words i mean the d word that theists do not like yes so so yeah i mean i you know you're right where you say was it kind of a, a slow a slow brood not your word but um was it a slow journey was there anything in particular i yeah it was it was a slower journey there were a lot of things there within it all there was uh approximately you know year and a half i suppose you could say deconversion uh journey where there were a lot of different things um more than anything i suppose you could say was as someone as an evangelical which i would suggest that the litmus test for evangelicalism is do you believe that the Christian Bible is the inspired, inerrant word of God. Um, if you can say yes to that, that whatever it means, whatever the hell is in there, it is inspired, it is inerrant. If you can say yes to that, there's kind of room to interpret it however you will, as long as you believe it's from God, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, and so in that sense, I was evangelical. I did believe the Bible was the inspired, inerrant word of God. And that said, I interpreted it quite progressively quite leftward we were not your typical evangelical church but the more i studied the more i looked 
you know, a, a full decade into my pastoral ministry, 15 or so years into total ministry. I just, as I looked around at the world around me, I saw more and more disconnect between what the Bible seemed to teach and what I saw reflected around me and my own personal experience, as well as in, um, you know, from a scientific lens, right, from a measurable lens. And so that broke down my understanding of biblical credibility. And then I came to a point where I had to ask, well, if I no longer find the Bible to be to be credible, is there anything else in the world around me that would seem to indicate the existence of a God? And the answer quickly became clear that it, in, in my understanding, that it was no. The only reason I believed in the existence of a God was because the Bible told me so. And so if I no longer saw it as credible, then why do I still believe it? And, uh, and so, um, and so that, that's, I suppose, there's much that could be said. Um, I've written on it quite extensively, but that's, that's kind of the nutshell of what it really came down to, if, if that's helpful. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so John shared with us that he was let go from his position for his lack of beliefs, which by the way, so sorry about that, John, that's awful. Um, <laughs> it happens. Was there any backlash to you, Drew? When not well in in some ways yes um not in my not directly in terms of uh a job although i do think there might have been a position or two that i had applied for and interviewed for that i did not get because of my public presence i have always shared my last name publicly Publicly, probably too transparently in some in in, uh, in some lenses um but so but no i had already i actually left my ministry if you will prior to finally admitting that i had become an atheist so i came to grips with the fact of my non-belief accepted the fact of my non-belief after I left the ministry, which we can certainly unpack if you want to. But so I did not, I was already doing other work transitionally um, by the time I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Cause I spent, I spent a year and a half fighting, laboring two years, really laboring for my faith. I loved my faith. It was very comfortable to me, especially being on the more progressive side of evangelicalism. And so I loved keeping my faith. I was very comfortable in it. I loved being at the center of God's plan and the savior of the rest of humanity. I loved being a pastor. So, so I was in no hurry to rush out of it. Um, but, um, but it, it, eventually it, it became clear after I left, I just couldn't deny it any longer. So again, I don't, I don't know if that's yeah. helpful. May I ask our do you consider yourself a believer in a God or gods? Are you a theist or something oh, else? What do you consider yourself? Which my friend has told me, sorry, my, I'm definitely agnostic, which my friend has told me is basically atheist. Um, I don't know if there's some sort of creator out there, but I also am fine with not knowing if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think a lot of us are in, in that boat. I, I don't, don't, I'm not, I'm not putting words in your mouth, Drew, but I don't think anybody knows um, if there's yeah, anything no. out there. I don't think anybody's like, well, maybe some people are convinced, you know, but I'm in this circle, I'm going to say probably not. But um, I, I, I don't know if there is or isn't a God. Am I convinced of one, though? No. So I, I label myself as atheist. But I think most of the people um, would be an agnostic and then continue uh you know what the rest of that is so i'm I'm agnostic theist or agnostic agnostic atheist um so yeah i I, I get that i get it um i did have something to say and it's completely oh no what i was going to say was um i i speak to a lot of um non-believers and we we've even done uh, with drew a circle of how did you step away from your belief and this isn't uh necessarily for everybody but a lot of people didn't just transition overnight it's every 
single circumstance that I've experienced and, and been told about has been a slow burn stepping away. And, you know, something might just enter their brain and go, do I believe this? I'm not so sure. And then like goes the journey of researching and, and trying to answer questions that you may have. And eventually um, all of the, the, the friendship circle that I have that, that is non-believer uh, has concluded that they don't believe in a God. Um, so I, I don't I don't suppose it's going to be a, a quick overnight thing for anybody. And even mine, I grew up not believing in a God, but my movement away from the spirituality side of things and just, you know, afterlife, that took me years to 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 drop that. Um, and I don't suppose it's ever going to be an overnight thing for anybody. Yeah, that's, that is a fair point because it, it wasn't for me either. I grew up Baptist, you know, the whole purity culture thing and, that was really hard to let go. Yeah, and it is, and I get it. And and you know, to keep asking questions, that's the best thing you can do. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Hey, no, thank you for calling in, Elaine. It was, it was nice to speak. Thanks, to you. Elaine. Great to chat with you.